Hi, I'm Martha Masters. I'm from the United States. I live in Los Angeles. Since about 2010, I've been president of the Guitar Foundation of America. So GFA was founded in 1973, and it was originally founded um, really to create a home for significant archival material of, of the classical guitar. And since then, it's kind of morphed into a lot of different things. We have a quarterly scholarly journal. We now have an annual peer-reviewed journal. We have an annual convention and an international competition, which has risen to a really nice high level. We, of course, have continued the archives. And one of our latest, most significant um, endeavors is, is support guitar education, especially in the United States where I think it's really lagging behind other countries. Judges every year are different and they are usually selected from the pool of artists that are performing at the convention. The artists are selected by a committee so that it's not just one person, it's not the friends of Martha who are performing at the convention every year. So there's a committee that selects the artist and then um, uh, from those artists that are selected we try and see who's the right fit um, for the various juries that we have involved. The venue um, has, in the past, it's been a different site every year. We're about to start to move to a rotation uh, cycle, which will make a lot of things easier for the staff. Um, but all those choices are made by the Board of Trustees. <laughs> we had one really lovely grant actually for the archives from um, the NEA, National Endowment for the Arts, and they really have been wonderfully supportive of that. One of the challenges we've had in the past as an organization is that we don't serve any one particular area since we move from year to year, and that makes it very challenging to get grant support, whether it be from the National Endowment for the Arts or any private granting foundations. By moving every year, we really limit ourselves in what grants were available. Oh, it would make life so much easier. But part of the idea is that we're trying to allow access for people who maybe couldn't afford a ticket across the country. Obviously, we're still hoping to get people from all over, but, but one of the things that happens when it moves is that somebody who otherwise never would have come, they have a chance to experience it. So we're starting to limit our movement now, which I think is going to be really smart for us. It's safer limiting our liability, um, but still gives some ex regional exposure to different areas of the U.S. We're going to have one location in Los Angeles. Yeah, some nice weather. Yeah. <laughs> And then the other that is basically 99% is uh, Louisville, Kentucky which we've been there before, um, and it was a really great venue, very successful, and it's really convenient to a lot of areas on the East Coast and Central United States. It's very, driving distance to just a ton of different cities in the U.S., so very convenient. Yeah, we're really hoping to see some, a lot of growth and change and to affect a lot of change in how guitar education works in the United States um, on a primary level offering the guitar in public schools, not to create more virtuoso players, but just to expose more people to classical guitar. Yeah, there's a lot of band and orchestra and choir. There's some piano, there's some guitar, um, but a guitar is really an instrument that is very cheap um, to put into the schools and it appeals to a lot of kids. And so we're hopeful that we can just help music education in general by, by diversifying with adding the guitar, but also making sure that the quality of the guitar that's being taught is really high level. I'm not obsessed about it always being only classical. In fact, I actually think if you're teaching basic guitar, it should include other styles. But I do believe um, very strongly that the quality of, of the technique needs to be high no matter what level you're teaching at. No, we need more. So right now, a lot of people that are teaching guitar in the public schools are choral teachers, band directors, who all of a sudden their school wants to have a guitar class. And so they're trying their best, but it's not what they do. So we want to try and help educate those people and get more guitar students. So, and, and one of the things we're trying to work on is getting more college guitar students to think about their life beyond school and think, maybe I could be a teacher, right? And to learn you know, what that would look like in career options for them.
<laughs> they're 12 and 9 and 7. And they're very busy children. Yeah, it's, um, it's a very busy schedule, and I, I am a very naturally kind of organized person. If, I, if I'm not, I go a little crazy. Um, so it's the only way I manage, and I'm a great multitasker, and so I think if I didn't have those things, I would go crazy, and I would, I would not get a lot of things done. But I've also learned to say no more often, uh, which has been helpful. I've also learned to, uh, you know, one of the mistakes I made when I was a new mom was wanting to be there all the time because I think as musicians we think we have more free time but really that that free time is when we practice it's when we imagine a program it's when we do all our creative work and if if we give it up we're not really artists anymore and so one of the mistakes I made when my kids came along was was giving up I don't know you can, can't call it a mistake when you spend more time with your children but then the art started to suffer and so I started to realize I am a full-time working parent and I need to respect my work hours so one of the things I've tried to do is really respect my work hours and then I respect my hours with my children so I very much segregate when I'm with my kids I don't work and when I'm working the kids have a babysitter <laughs> so there are very clear boundaries and my kids understand them and they work for me I, I, it's it's less visual and it's more auditory and I'm 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 listening and I don't know when I'm listening I, I hear the sound going somewhere and I, I think I'm following it. Yeah, um, I'm feeling. <laughs> I think that's the right answer is that I'm feeling and and I'm 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 really just listening to the the path of that note and when it's gone I think usually when I'm looking around because I feel it that I'm I'm doing it but. It's, it's, a, it's a, an unconscious response to listening to a note fade. And so I, I think it's almost like watching it go. Yeah. Oh, how do I feel? <laughs> um, sometimes nostalgic, sometimes ready to see it go, right? I, I, but I feel like it's always, you know, everything's in the right place is the goal. I do. I think it's pretty important to understand what's behind a piece. Um, uh, it's not 100% and really ultimately what, what comes is actually, you know, really getting your hands in on the phrasing and, you know, where does it breathe and, and where are the peaks and all of that's what really makes it sing. But if, but if you understand the style, you can more accurately really kind of get to the heart and, and expand on, on what the composer was looking for. Right. Well, I think, um, you, you know, a lot of people, my friends who aren't musicians, when they hear I'm a musician, they think I'm creative. And I always say, I, I don't think I'm creative. I'm, I'm, I'm not a creator. I don't write music. I don't paint art. I, I take the music that someone else has written and I interpret, right? So I suppose you could say it's creative, but to me it feels exploratory. I feel more like an explorer, more like... Christopher Columbus. <laughs> I'm discovering something that, that's already laid out, right? And I could take a path that goes around, you know, the, you know, the south of a continent, or I could take a more direct route, or, you know, there are, there are different ways you can work through a piece. Um, and, and some of them, are, you know, multiple ways can be valid. So and to me, that ex exploration is really fun. I guess I don't think of myself as a creator. I'm an explorer. Uh, there are pieces that require strength, right? And I, I like to think that hopefully I can bring strength, but my nature is to be more intimate, right? And so, um, so pieces like that come more naturally to me. Pieces where there's power, I've really loved learning how to get power because I didn't have it at first, and it feels pretty good actually to use it, but it, it's, it's not my nature. The, the lyrical, the, the intimate things come more naturally to me.
You know, tonight I played with a violinist, and I absolutely adore playing with string players, bowed strings. So I would really love to, to kind of get a little bit more regular work going with a string player. My sister was a violinist, and I miss that. So. They're amazing. They're, they're so far ahead of where I was when I was their age, and I'm completely blown away by the level of talent and, and of discipline of these kids, but also of just you know how guitar teaching has improved in the last 30 years, that we're teaching at such a higher level now, so that's really it's exciting to me. Oh, I hope there's more. I hope there are more because, I mean, I like men a lot, but, but when I go to a guitar festival, I'm often the only woman there. I, I really am, except for the wives of the men, right? <laughs> and so it would be nice to have a few more. Um, there aren't very many of us, especially in the United States, we're really underrepresented. It seems more balanced in Europe. It seems more balanced in China, which I think is fantastic. Um, so in the US, we have to work on it. I think it is. I think, I think in the United States what's holding women back from, from really even beginning is that it's the classical guitar is not sold as an instrument that's an option in schools, right? And so how kids learn about guitar is through electric guitar and rock. And that's something that I think more boys are just naturally attracted to. And, and so girls just don't begin to play. And, and I think in, in China, in Europe, there's classical guitar in all the pre-college settings, and girls see that and think, yeah, I could, I could do that. <laughs> so I think it's a more natural kind of attraction for, for a younger girl, but in the U.S. they simply don't have the opportunity to see it very much. This is Martha Masters, and you're watching Music in Music.com.